I did a couple of fixes and then now let's do a simple demo of whatever we have done. We should be able to create a restaurant and the address. So if you look at the, the restaurant service here, this is our restaurant controller. This is using access token auth card. That means this API needs to pass authorization token and this auth token, you can see we are using auth strategy here, access token strategy. I'm just trying to logging in so that we can check what is coming in from the payload. So from auth service, we will do the login. This is our auth service. I already have one user demo, which will give me the token. I need to start the auth service also. NPM run start dev. So once we have both the services running, what we will do is we will do the login with this user. This user has the, the permission already, which is restaurant admin. You can see the restaurant admin and I will use this token in the restaurant API. Right. And then we can just use this search API and the restaurant. First, we are going to create the restaurant. And for creating the restaurant, we already have the API, which I will talk about create restaurant. And here we also have the user context, which is of type user metadata. In user metadata, we have user ID, email and the permission. Create restaurant, it is using just a type ORM transaction. First, we are creating a restaurant and then passing the restaurant to the create address so that we can pass the restaurant ID because if you see the entity restaurant address restaurant uh, restaurant ID is as a foreign key inside a restaurant address entity so we need to add a restaurant set the restaurant while creating the restaurant address record so coming back here first we created a restaurant and then created restaurant we are passing in the create address so create address, we know how to create uh, using query runner, query runner dot manager dot save your entity name and the payload. So here also we are passing the owner ID, owner ID I created as a new field that will tell you who is the owner of this restaurant. So this is a restaurant entity and owner ID is of type UUID that I have added. It's not null. That means you need to have an owner while creating a restaurant and owner id we cannot pass from the payload it is coming from the token so restaurant controller create restaurant we are creating a restaurant and then we are passing that restaurant to the address and then the the we are passing that restaurant to while creating the address so because there is a relationship between restaurant and restaurant address that is the, the only thing we have done till now we will just try to test these apis create restaurant, restaurant address, restaurant entity. And this is the access JWT token strategy we are using. I try to log it. So we will also check what we are getting from this token. So API v1 restaurant. And here you can see this is what it is logging, right? This is what we are getting from the token. Okay. We need to set the, the logging. For that, I mean, I'm using this debug. That's just a random logging module. Eats restaurant. We need to just enable one flag inside our dot env so that we can also see all those things are coming on the env in on the log. This is the debug verbose debugging. Restaurant admin. Okay, so it will pick up this uh, ENV. I will restart this application. This is restaurant npm run start dev. I guess I added that in the correct service. This is restaurant service. So I will start this. Once this is started, we will create the restaurant. So I will hit this API. And this is my payload. And this is what we are getting inside the token. You can say user ID, email and the permission. So when you are communicating across services, you are passing the token and the token has a permission. So you can 
use the role based authorization at the API level. We are getting user ID. So this user ID we can carry forward and we can store in the reference because this is a loose reference for n key. Loose for n key we can say. So restaurant owner ID will be this user ID because he is a restaurant admin and he is creating a restaurant. And here you can see this is a transaction type warm transaction we are uh, starting the transaction doing two car insert and then doing the commit if any of the failure occurred because we don't want restaurant to be created and without address so restaurant and restaurant address both should get processed successfully so coming to this service domain controller restaurant controller so I mean, we'll just keep adding more and more APIs, get, put, update, fetch the list of restaurant. So all these APIs we will be adding in the same manner. This is just like uh, we can say the baselining the restaurant service with all the permissions, how to access the APIs. Let's say here you did the, did the logout. Okay, now you are trying to access the API. What will happen? You should get unauthorized, right? A week you can customize this message because you are not passing the, the right token. You need to be first authenticated and then authorized. You also need to have appropriate role to access this. So here we can also add a role guard. So use guard. Here I am not using this. There is a, I think there is a role guard we also have. Inside role guard you can just pass user roles dot restaurant admin role guard okay, we have a use card and then okay let me check we have this role guard so going to the controller This role guard is injectable. What happened with this role decorator? Access token guard injectable. Use guard. Uh, am I doing something wrong? Okay, I created the decorator. Sorry, roles allowed. This is the decorator I have created, and I'm just need to pass this user role. Right sorry for that so roles allowed is a custom decorator i have created and then you need to use two guards here access token guard and there is one more guard we have created that is role guard can i pass it like this use guards yes you can pass multiple guards i mean this, these metadata this is only to populate this user role current logged in user role into the metadata property so you can see role guard what it is having it is getting this from the reflector property so you need to pass it somewhere right this roles property so we have this custom decorator roles allowed this is putting this property inside a metadata roles and we are saying that we can allow only to the restaurant admin so then you will check the current user uh, role uh, is that equal to the restaurant admin yes then you can allow him to access this particular api so this is how we are adding the role based uh, authorization at the api level so this access token guard is checking you are authenticated you have the token uh, the role guard is checking the authorization okay so that's it guys uh, in the next video we'll keep adding couple of more apis for the restaurant and then we'll also check on the elastic search how we can populate the data there using asynchronous folks a simple demo to test this uh, role based authorization let's say i'm just allowing it to the restaurant admins there is no such uh, enum admins there is no such role let's say what will happen is if I try to execute this API, it is forbidden because your role is uh, restaurant admin, not admins. So I will just revert it, fix it. Now you can access this API. Everything works fine. Okay. So this is just a simple demo how we are doing authentication and authorization.